Carlos, uh, congratulations yet again. Thanks so much for joining us, kicking us off our coverage here in Nashville. Just first and foremost, what have these last few weeks been like trying to get your feet wet and, and understand what's ahead of you now? Yeah, uh, excited to be here, guys. Uh, and like you say, it's been, uh, you get lost easy here. In this yeah. <laughs> it's huge. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been great, you know, busy, but, uh, you know, great working, putting together the coaching staff was, uh, you know, was a lot of work, you know, uh, talking to David, uh, a lot of the front office people and just going through the interview process with so many names, great names and a uh, uh, lot of knowledge from, uh, you know, uh, all over. But finally able to uh, to put together that coaching staff and finally announcing it today uh, was great. Yeah, Very happy about and, that. and I wanted to follow up on on that coaching staff because I think a lot of times when, you know, it's a new manager, a new president of baseball operations, it's almost this wholesale change of the old coaching staff is out and we're bringing in new guys, our guys. You kept a bunch of holdovers from the last coaching staff. What was that process like where you said, you know what, we want to at least talk to these guys and see if they're still a fit here. Yeah, and that was that was the case. You know, we wanted some continuity, obviously, you know, having players with some familiar faces. It was important for all of us. And then just talking to all of them, you know, pretty much started with half, you know, in the pitching side and came out really, really impressed with his personality and, and the way he connected with people. And obviously, the experience the past couple of years there with the, with the team. And then guys like Chavis, you know, uh, I had a prior relationship with him with the Yankees when he was a special uh, assistant for Cashman uh, back in 2014. Uh, you know, just having all those conversations with the whole coaching staff that was here uh, not only last year, but, you know, past couple of years, you know, before we move on to try to bring some new faces and new voices and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, exactly. It and the fact that we were able to keep uh, a lot of them, uh, you know, uh, means a lot to all of us and definitely the players as well. Hey, Carlos, I'm, I'm curious when you're obviously major league bench coach and major league coach now, what, what six years at least, how, how did that experience shape your experiences? What do you to expect as a manager now, your managerial style? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to go back to my years when I was in the minor leagues coaching and managing, you know, and then back in Winnable. And, uh, but definitely the past six years in New York, uh, uh, it, it was great to have that opportunity to be a coach, a bench coach in, uh, in New York, you know, with expectations and, and you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a fan base that, that they care and uh, the, the expectations are always high. And uh, I'm excited about that opportunity, you know, past six years learning from uh, from Booney and, and, and the whole organization uh, with the Yankees. Now I get I get to do it with the Mets and in New York is is an honor, is a privilege. And I'm really excited. I can't wait to get going. So, Carlos, you've known Luis Severino literally since he was a kid. You go yep. he's go back a long way to the minor leagues. Can you tell Mets fans what they're getting in Severino, what to be excited about potentially that you like about him? And also, like, what assurances do you have that he's healthy, that he's going to be able to make his starts for you, and, and those kind of concerns are going to be okay? Yeah, I mean, you said it. Uh, I go back to when, we, you know, he, he first got signed out of right. Dominican Republic back in 2011, I think it was. And I watched him grow and develop in the minor league system, and then he became a big league pitcher. He became an all-star. Mm -hmm. And then, not a secret, he's dealt with a lot the past couple of years, right? But we know the talent, you know, and... Uh, um, this is the, the one thing about Sevi, he's a competitor. You know, he wants he wants the ball. Uh, biggest game there is, he wants to be there. Uh, he's done that in New York. Uh, so I'm excited to have him uh, on, on our roster. And, uh, you know, um, there's going to be a lot of conversations from our end to, you know, with with him uh, and his people to make sure that we put together a really good plan here in the early going in the offseason leading up to spring training so we can have that build up uh, the right way, if, if you want to call it. How involved are you personally, real quick, in, uh, in recruiting him to the Mets and helping to get that deal done, given your relationship? Yeah, uh, David reached out, and we started having these conversations, uh, you know, with the front office, and eventually I got the opportunity to talk to Louis and just, you know, because um, he knows me, obviously, right? But my expectations, and I wanted to hear his side of the mm -hmm. story, too, like, because I wanted to make sure he wanted to be here. And definitely, this is a guy that loved New York, too. He, Like I said, he wants to be in the biggest stage. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, there was a connection, obviously, and I'm glad that they were, you know, we were able to bring him more. Carlos, when you look at your potential lineup and how you'd construct it, for years and years and years, one of the certainties is that Brandon Nimmo is going to be right at the top. His ability to get on base is almost unprecedented in the game today. But this year, especially in the second half, he made an adjustment to his approach and tried to hit for 
more power and, and did it successfully at the expense sometimes of that on base percentage. Um, when you look at this this roster of players you currently have, maybe some guys coming up, are you open to potentially moving Nimmo down in the lineup a little bit to take advantage of some of that newfound power? Look, I mean, he brings a lot to the table, right? And you mentioned a lot of you know a lot of things that he's done well, uh, controlling the strike zone, getting on base, but then. He started hitting for power, you know. He coming off a career year offensively, right? Uh, but these are some of the conversations that I'm going to have with him, and as, as we get closer to spring training and all, you know, eventually opening day, when we start talking about lineups and all that, uh, talking to coaches and 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 talking to players just to kind of get a feel for him and you know it's kind of like a two-way street here you know he just not carlos mendoza making a decision just but uh you know i know a lot of the qualities that he brings to the table uh on base being one of them but now the power is you know part of his game too uh but i'm excited about it and i'm you know looking forward to these conversations with him and and then a lot of the players yeah uh, carlos a lot of guys a lot of uh prospects now are, are getting close to the major league level playing in new york you know is a difficult uh, task i know in your previous role one of the things you did well you you, hand, you would talk to some of the young guys before they would play what's some of that advice that you'd give to, to some of the newer mets when they first come up yeah uh, a lot of a lot of young players came up with the yankees at the end of the year right and uh, you just got to keep it simple you know uh, the game is hard you know <laughs> a lot of times people forget that it's, it's a hard game you know and and when you add that third deck especially in new york he, he, he could get on people you know you just trying to keep it simple you know, just make them feel comfortable, make them feel at home, and just kind of just go out and be yourself, right? And then the development process, you know, teaching how to play the game the right way, the attention to details, how to prepare. You know, a lot, a lot of the times these guys are so used to play every day at the minor league level, they come up to the big leagues, and that's not necessarily the case. And they got to learn how to come off the bench. They got to learn how to prepare and how to come in the 17th and, 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 and be a defensive replacement or how to play every other day. And then eventually, yeah, you want those guys playing every day, right? But there's a development uh, in different areas. Look, in New York, just getting to the ballpark <laughs> could be a challenge, right? So it it definitely a, will be a challenge know, that, every day. That, so yeah. that's part of the learning process. Just, how, you know, how do you get ready? How, you know, it's just uh, watch guys that have been there, done that, and have success in the past. I think it's important, and I'm looking forward there's a lot of talent coming out there knocking at the door right now. Mm. Carlos, if you're looking for people to learn directions, just drop them in this hotel for about a week <laughs> and see if they can find their way around, and they should be good to go in New York. He's Carlos Mendoza, the new manager of the New York Mets. Carlos, congratulations again. Thanks so much for joining thanks. us. Yeah, thanks for having me.